Carr noticed a set of distinctive contours that confirmed its identity. Underneath that ridge is separating the surface for the eye, so the top inside of the eyeball would have been in this vicinity, and on the other side of this ridge would have been the front of the brain, and up here, the back of the airway, of the nasal airway. Carr named this young T-Rex after a colleague, calling him Little Clint. From the discovery of just four bone fragments, Carr knew he was onto something big. Finding this specimen was an amazing stroke of luck. It has stoked Carr's ambition to document the growth of T. rex throughout its life, from hatchling all the way to adult. But such specimens are extremely rare. Using Carr's findings, Hall Train can begin building his model. Jason Braun, an artist and naturalist from the American Museum of Natural History, has come to help design the model. But nothing is straightforward. Would a CT scan even see the distinction of muscles, you think? To fill in crucial details, they'll use photographs of a related species, a young Tarbosaurus. That, yeah, that probably is what that is. This brown wax form is a miniature version of an adult T. rex skull. On the top of the orbit. They'll now reshape it into a baby T. rex. So there are a series of proportional changes that we want to do. We want to have a somewhat shorter rostrum, which is the part in front of the eye. Mm -hmm. We want to have uh, some of the sculpture has to come down and be smoother. Mm -hmm. Now they begin to cut, shave, and sculpt it down to size. A juvenile T-Rex is going to have a much shorter snout proportionately, much larger eye opening. The overall look of the head is going to be similar, but it'll, it'll just be shorter and cuter, bigger eyes. To make sure they get it right, they'll turn to a specialist. So anyway, this is a like a prototype proof of principle. Mark Norell is a curator at the American Museum of Natural History. He's been studying dinosaurs for over 20 years. That's so sharp, that's amazing. They have pulled rare specimens from the museum's collections for comparison. That's, you know, I would make it much uh, narrower, like slit like. The wax model is close, but he notices a few irregularities. On this one, like, this is actually the top of the skull right here. So A horn-like feature at the top of the skull of related dinosaurs is missing. So it's almost like a, a horn. The team will adjust and recalculate the dimensions of the skull to match the real fossils in front of them. I mean, the dentary in general, I, I would make it shorter. OK. Jason can now finally draw the bones to their exact scale. With accurate dimensions, the team can start to visualize what this young killer would have looked like. When it's finished, the model will be almost six feet long and three feet high. A swift runner with strength and agility. It's a creature the public has never seen. A young tyrannosaur on the cusp of survival. Paul Train is known for his ability to breathe life into creatures made of metal and plastic. He'll mount his Model T Rex on a machine that uses gears and rods to simulate how it would actually have moved. You end up having a flexible connector through the vertebrae, a disc, and then what do you, for something like this, do you? Or is it a, or is it a, to decipher the animal's actual motion, he and Stephen Gatesy, a biomechanics expert, begin by laying out a set of plastic bones. How did a real T-Rex balance? 
walk, and run. So a pitching motion is hard. Pitching motion is hard, yeah. <laughs> to find answers, they decide to observe a distant relative of T-Rex, one that's living today. You first. <laughs>